Ladies and gentlemen, please find your seats. Our program will begin in two minutes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Chairman of the Board of Directors for the Military Child Education Coalition, retired United States Air Force General, Will Fraser. All right. How are we doing? Good? Or as we say in Texas, howdy. Ah, come on, you can do better than that. Howdy. Howdy. All right. Well, it's giddy up time again, right? Here we are at the uh, National Training Seminar, and I want to take this opportunity to uh, welcome each and every one of you, and thank you for joining uh, for us for this 19th annual NTS. And this is going to be the best one yet, right? Yeah. All right. Got to get you fired up here, you know. We're going to have some fun, too, right? You know, we have an incredible lineup of speakers for you. But I know with your engagement, it's going to just keep getting better and better. But tonight, tonight we're going to start this general session with a couple of speakers. We're honored to have them here. And let me tell you, as chairman of the board, I'm amazed at the level of support that we continue to receive at MSEC. Each year, it seems to get better and better. The people that MSEC counts on to attend this event is remarkable. And we've got a lot of repeat offenders, and we really appreciate that. You know, whether you're military, an educator, an author, or any one of a number of department heads, MSEC counts on each of you as a friend and as a supporter. In fact, we have one special supporter tonight that loves MSEC so much that they even doubled down on their contribution to MSEC, and we greatly, greatly appreciate that. That's the type of support we give, so, uh, that we have, selfless givers. The combined effect of these supporters and the yeoman's work done by the MSEC staff that is very lean and very efficient make things happen. They make things happen because they're truly making a difference in the lives of our military-connected children. I'd also like to make a special note of our theme for this year's National Training Seminar. That theme is Military and Veteran Children, a Constellation of Strengths and Challenges. You know, Webster's Dictionary offers the following definitions of a constellation. Number one, it's any of the 88 stellar groupings. General Bolden, you need to check us out on this as a NASA <laughs> an official. <laughs> Considered to resemble and named after mythological characters, objects, or animals. 
Now, I don't consider any of you as an object or an animal, okay? So that can't be you. But also, it's considered a gathering or assemblage of similar or related persons or things. But let me offer this for insect purposes. Our constellation is a grouping of over 4 million stars, each representing a child, a child of a military service member in all of the branches, components, and all veterans whose combined light brightly reflects the strengths and challenges of each. That's really who we are and what a constellation it is. As a father of two children who grew up in the military, we moved around, in fact, 29 times, changing households. So we can relate to you, our military-connected kids. And as a leader of airmen with families who did just the same, selflessly moving about, I can tell you that the military kids face challenges far exceeding those that are faced by other counterparts. Yet those same challenges provide them with a wealth of experiences and opportunities that create strengths that ultimately prepare you for college, for a career, and for what life has set before you. Our military kids routinely demonstrate grit, determination, and perseverance in their everyday lives and I've seen it firsthand. Throughout this NTS, we will discuss the challenges and you will see some of those strengths on display in our children. I'm also excited about the speakers, the collaborative sessions and the distinguished lecturers that we have set for you over the next two days, starting with our opening session and our opening speakers this evening. I'd also like to take a moment to rethink our generous donors and sponsors for their support of this great event. Now, the list is way too long for me to go through it again, but many of those sponsors are actually represented here in this audience tonight. So if I could have those sponsors, please stand and allow us to recognize you. Please stand up and let us. Come on, stand up. <laughs> you know, we, we could not make this happen without you, and we greatly appreciate it. Now, a special treat. Next on stage to perform and to introduce our first guest speaker is Avery Noakes. She is the daughter of two proud Air Force veterans and musicians who also happen to be an attorney and a civil servant. Obviously, there's a lot of talent in this family. Avery has been studying voice, dance, and theater arts and has been performing since the age of six. She's really grown up, she's all of nine now. <laughs> and according to her, in talking to her, if music doesn't work out professionally, she can always be a scientist, an engineer, or a veterinarian. Now that is something to fall back on. <laughs> you know, in her free time, this talented nine-year-old sews, plays, plays with her dolls, and attends Sidwell Friends School in Bethesda, Maryland. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please stand as she sings our national anthem and join me in welcoming Avery Noakes to the stage. So proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the 
Thank you very much. What an amazing... Thank you very much. What an amazing honor it is to introduce someone who is a lifelong educator and leader, who really cares about taking care of our military kids and families. Not only was she a military kid herself, but she's also a military mom. So when it comes to the challenges and needs of our military families, she really knows what she's talking about. And she also knows how hard it is for kids when their moms and dads get deployed. She even wrote a book about it. And she worked with our former First Lady, Michelle Obama, to create Joining Forces, which has helped Americans everywhere learn more about the military and find ways to help. But she is especially passionate about helping military kids learn. In fact, she helped start Operation Educate the Educators, so that teachers everywhere know the best way to teach our kids. And if that's not impressive enough, <laughs> and I think this is so cool, she got one of the biggest standing ovations at this year's Tony Awards. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the former second lady of the United States, Dr. Joe Biden. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Avery. Gosh, I can tell music runs in her family. That was such a beautiful, amazing version of our national anthem. And Avery, I thought the Tonys were pretty cool, too. And I can't wait until we see her up on stage getting an award herself. <laughs> Abby, you're such an incredible young woman, and you remind us all just why we're here today, for bright young people like you. Well, you know, before I came out here, I met some amazing students. I see a lot of them are scattered here and uh, from all over our country, and actually all, from all over the globe, and uh, just incredible kids. And um, although I have to tell you, they all had um, pretty much the same comment. I like your shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to start by uh, welcoming all, all of you here today who are so familiar to me. Um, some of you, like Mary Keller, who has been a tireless advocate. And she's been working on these issues since long before we started joining forces eight years ago. You know, you've stood by military families and I wanna thank you, Mary, from the bottom of my heart for all the support that you've given us. And welcome to the new faces here as well. We are all growing and becoming more effective because People like you are joining this cause. As many of you know, uh, and as Avery said, uh, you know, this is a very personal issue for me because I come from a military family and the Bidens are a military family. My dad was in the Navy and my son Bo served a tour of duty in Iraq as a member of the Delaware Army National Guard. And it was just a few weeks before the beginning of our administration. And even though we were beginning a new chapter of our lives, it was just a wonderful adventure. You know, missing Bo was always there and always present. We spoke to Bo as often as we could. And, you know, on election night, we uh, Skyped with Bo and we got his unit on a laptop and uh, because we wanted, to, as we walked out onto that stage, we wanted to make sure that Bo could be with us. So he walked right out there on, on the laptop, but you know, he <laughs> saw what we saw. And, um, but you know, of course it wasn't the same. And um, well, with this crowd, many of you know exactly what I mean. 
during uh, Bo's deployment, I, I watched, I saw just how tough it was on my grandkids, Natalie and Hunter. And they felt his absence every single day, whether it was a, at their soccer game, their school presentation, every family dinner. Like any family, you know, we, we all did our best. We tried to make up for it on Christmases and birthdays. We reminded them just how much they're loved, made them feel special, but we couldn't fill that empty seat at the dinner table. As second lady, I've met so many Natalies and Hunters serving in their own way, sacrificing for our nation. So some of you may have heard this story before, um, but I try to tell it as often as I can because we owe it to the little girl I'm going to tell you the story about. I was touring Camp Victory in Iraq in uh, 2010, and I spoke with a general who told me about something that happened at his daughter's school. The general's daughter was in first grade. At a school concert, the band played Ave Maria. Suddenly, one of her classmates burst into tears. Everyone was kind of confused. So the teacher ran over and, and pulled her aside and said, you know, what's the matter? And she, that's when she explained that she heard and hadn't heard that song since it had played at her daddy's funeral. Her teacher didn't even know that her father had served or that he had died. That little girl, just six years old, already carried a lifetime of grief on her shoulders. And it had grown so strong under its weight that some of the most important people in her life didn't even know. Well, that night I went back to my room. It was in um, Saddam Hussein's former palace. It was a huge room with a double bed and gold molding and really loud air conditioners. <laughs> and it was surreal, I mean, to see, you know, Saddam Hussein's palace in the middle of the desert. And I couldn't sleep. And I was haunted by the idea that our military children were not getting the help they needed simply because they weren't being seen. The next morning, I called my staff together in the DFAC to brainstorm. And that's where we came up with the idea of Operation Educate the, ed the Educators. You know, there are some heartbreaks we can't prevent, but there are obstacles that we can make a little easier to overcome as long as we address the unique challenges that military children face, as long as we see them. We all know that keeping our country safe requires sacrifice. It always will. But we can do more to make sure that our military children aren't sacrificing more than they have to. We can do more to ensure that they have the education and community support they need. And as we've seen, it doesn't always have to be this giant paradigm shift. When my son was in Iraq, my granddaughter Natalie's teacher hung a picture of Bo's unit outside of the classroom. That little gesture made my granddaughter Natalie feel so special because everyone knew that Natalie's daddy was away fighting a war. Just last year when I was visiting Fort Riley, I saw a teacher using Google Cardboard. I'm sorry, sure you know what that is. The virtual reality phone accessory to help kids tell their stories. They were each able to show their classmates in 3D the places that they'd been 
And instead of feeling like outsiders, because, you know, military kids move so much, they got to feel like they had to, you know, they showed the insight and the expertise to offer their friends. And really, the idea behind Operation Educate the Educators wasn't complicated either. Together, the American Association of Colleges for Teacher Education and MSEC encouraged teachers' colleges to adopt guiding principles for preparing educators to meet the needs of military-connected children. From small acts of kindness to spreading the word about the realities that these children face, many of the ways we can help aren't that difficult. We just have to choose to make them a priority. And I know that they're a priority for everyone in this room today. I've been a teacher for over three decades now, and I believe there is no more passionate, driven, or effective group than this one to take on the task. Educators don't just clock in and clock out. Teaching is more a job, you know, more than a job. It's a calling. And the subjects we teach, the material on the whiteboard, that's just a piece of really of what we do. We push students to think in different ways. We challenge them to go the extra mile. We help them to find ways to believe in themselves. Over the next few days, you'll learn techniques for reaching these students in even more powerful ways. And starting this school year, you'll have more tools than ever to help our military kids. And especially to take that first step that's been so difficult in the past. Simply see them. As many of you know, in late 2015, Congress passed a law that will allow governments and school agencies to track military students' test scores, graduation rates, and other important measures of success. Starting with this coming school year, which for me is in two weeks, educators, researchers, and policymakers will finally have what they need to identify these students and adjust their strategies when our schools aren't working for them. This is a credit to MSEC, a credit to everyone who helped get this law on the books, some of whom I know are here tonight. It's an enormous step forward, but it's just that, a step, and we have a lot more to do. First of all, we need to track the National Guard and Reserve students as well. This isn't mandated at, yes. <laughs> this isn't mandated at the federal level, but states and school districts can make the decision to track these numbers. It's a simple choice that makes a big difference. There's no reason why we should leave 500,000 children behind. Children like my grandkids, because Bo was National Guard, to leave them out of this conversation. Two, and this is really important, we have to put that data to work. The data we have now is not bad. The data we're going to get is great. But none of it can help if we don't guide use it to guide our classrooms, schools, and education policies. For you researchers out there, keep up the good work, and don't forget the kids we're here for. And for the educators and policymakers, don't forget that our statistic-loving friends are really important partners. And most importantly, we need people like all 
of you on the ground who are committed to doing right by our military children. There are almost 700 people in this room right now. MSEC has done the math. With all the kids, military kids out there, we need to reach 7 million adults who will work with them. The teachers, the administrators, the school counselors, the after-school program leaders, and more. We need you all, all of you, to help bridge this gap. But don't worry. That doesn't mean going out and reaching thousands of educators on your own. Maybe you talk to five other teachers at your school. Or bring it up at the beginning of your uh, school meetings for the year. Or send fellow educators an email and direct them to MSEC's webpage. Or post it on social media. At the end of this conference, you'll be asked for ideas on ways you can spread the word. So kind of be thinking of that in the next couple days. Because when you reach those people, they go out and talk with others, and other people talk too. And soon enough, our classes, our schools, our after-school programs, and community centers will transform for the better. And let me add that our foundation, mine and Joe's, the Biden Foundation, is with you all the way. We want to work with MSEC and all of you to continue serving the families who serve our nation. In my time as second lady, I met with kids who were struggling through some pretty challenging things. Loneliness, displacement, difficulties in school, depression, but more than that, much more than that, I met kids who were finding a way to thrive, even in tough situations. I met kids who were resilient and funny and quick to adapt to whatever life brought them their way. Just like a lot of the kids that I met here earlier, I met kids who, inspired by their parents, were finding ways to serve their communities. In fact, I met a lot of kids who were finding ways to help other military kids. Just like I saw uh, the S student to student that I stopped by outside of this room. They were families like Kyle, a teenager in Tucson, who teaches his peers how to use video production to tell their stories. Or Miranda and Kylie, two friends whose parents are both in the National Guard. They started the Sisterhood of the Traveling BDUs. <laughs> That's battle dress uniforms for you civilians. A nationwide network to help military girls share their struggles. Or Felicity and Abigail, sisters who, despite having moved almost every single school year, told me, don't feel sorry for us. We are stronger because of our experiences. Our military kids are strong. They're brave and powerful, just like their parents. They don't need our sympathy, but they do need our support. That is the debt we owe them. And that is the debt we owe their parents, the men and women who put their lives on the line for us every single day. And if we can give them that support, if we can lift up these bright, ambitious, amazing kids like Avery, like my Natalie and Hunter, like Kyle and Miranda and Abigail, then we won't just help them succeed. We'll make our schools, our communities, our military, and our nation stronger. 
Thank you. May God bless our troops. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back to the stage General Will Fraser, joined by AMSEC President and CEO Dr. Mary Keller and Avery Notes.